right, so please, uh, let's get into the meditation posture again. And uh, yeah, again, just take a few moments to settle your attention on your breath to calm the mind. Again, dropping all thoughts about the past or the future and just abiding in the present moment. All right, so now here again, <clears throat> we're going to visualize in the space in front of you. So visualize three people, okay? Someone you like, a friend, uh, a loved one, someone you dislike, or someone who gets on your nerves, and then someone who moves you, uh, you know, neither, uh, in either direction, right? someone you feel indifference towards. Okay, so clearly visualize those three people. And now first uh, bring your uh, focus on your friend and consider your feelings for that person and allow them to arise. So really think, you know, this is really my friend. This person is so good to me. I love this person so much. And just let your, your natural reaction unmitigated uh, arise strongly and clearly in your mind. And then also, then we can just consider that, you know, how easily it is to, to arise feelings that you want this person to be happy. You know, we, we consider how this person has been a source of our happiness in the past. And therefore, we really want this person to be happy. We really, it's an easy to generate these kind of good feelings in relation to this person. So again, here the analysis is to, to see this natural reaction to the friend and see how easy it is to arise these good feelings. All right, so now put that uh, aside for now, and then shift your attention to your enemy. And so this could be a person you dislike, or even a person that has, is not kind to you, maybe has harmed you in the past, maybe someone who annoys you, irritates you, who has hurt you. And similarly, look at how your mind sort of relates to this person. Try to notice and remember the difference with 
this person versus the, the friend. And then finally, we shift our attention to the stranger, the person we might not know that well. And then look at this person and look at your feelings you have toward them. So now we move on to the next phase of this meditation, this analysis. And so now think about why do we have these categories? Why do we consider people to be friend and your stranger? And so for our friends, it could be that, you know, they've benefited us in the past. The enemies have harmed us in the past. And the strangers, you know, we don't have any real basis of a relationship with them. And then we consider how even these, these labels, these categories are very impermanent in nature. So thinking, you know, maybe in our own lives, we had, you know, friend, friendships that have ended. And certainly even our best friends now, at some point, we were strangers. We didn't know them our whole lives. And then maybe some, some of us have had the experience of, you know, we had a friend, then we had a falling out, and then eventually we made up again. So even these labels of friend, enemy, stranger are constantly in flux. So again, at the end of the analysis, when you, when you arrive at that conclusion that these labels are impermanent and are constantly changing, then just allow your mind to have that aha moment, have that little mini realization, and then allow your mind to sink into it. So now, let's just, at the sake of, for, for the sake of imagination, then consider our friend. And try to imagine a situation that will cause the friendship to end. Maybe your friend turns against you. Maybe your own best friend, you know, uh, 
cheats on your romantic partner. Maybe they betrayed you. So imagine that, that thing that maybe you can't conceive them doing, but imagine that's actually happened. And try to feel the hurt you would feel by that. Now, when you consider that person in light of them doing that, does your conception of them change? Do you still have that warm friendly, fuzzy feeling toward them? So now, Given that, given this uh, fleeting and, you know, precarious, uh, able to change at any moment, then how does that change your conception of this solid category of the friend? Is it logical that we only felt that warm, fuzzy feeling and wanting this person to be happy and wanting them well and not having that for the enemy or stranger? Does that make sense given the impermanent and ever-changing nature of this relationship? All right, so now let's move on to the as enemy. The person who has maybe harmed you in the past or irritated you. So now can you imagine a situation in which you make amends and become close again? Maybe they come to you and apologize for everything that they did to you in the past. They've realized the errors of their ways. Maybe now they've discovered Dharma and they've become a, you know, uh, a close disciple of His Holiness the Dalai Lama or, or Lama Zoparimpeshe. Maybe they harmed you, you know, 10, 15 years ago when we were still in school. And now you discover that they're, you know, they've been a monk for 10 years. They've been training their minds. They've been on retreat. And now they've become the Dalai Lama's favorite student. And not only that, since they're the Dalai Lama's favorite student, they've 
they've asked you to come all the way to Dharmasala. They say, okay, come and you know, we'll have a, uh, a personal meeting with the Dalai Lama. They invite you for that. You still gonna hold on to your anger? You're gonna hang up the phone on them? So then, although you might consider this person to be the enemy now, don't you see this too is in, in flux? This too is impermanent. This too could change. So now last, move again the attention to the stranger. And imagine that maybe, you know, even one act of kindness or anger from them could uh, then shift them into the category of friend or enemy. And there's no inherent, intrinsic, definite stranger there. Again, remembering how the, the present friend and the present enemy also were once strangers. And this stranger also could change into those categories. So now, look again and consider all three and think about these relationships being in constant flux and try to feel really that those labels of friend, enemy, stranger aren't as concrete, aren't as fixed, aren't as permanent as we have thought or conceived before. And now lastly, just consider that actually these three that you visualize in front of you, just like yourself, all want happiness. And they want happiness just as much as you do. They all don't want to suffer just as much as you do. And so especially even the enemy who is harmless in the past, they probably harmed us because they too at that time were confused. They too were overwhelmed by the afflictions. So 
So if we consider how we have harmed others in the past, you know, then it becomes clear. When we get angry, we then say those hurtful things to others. So whatever this person did to us, same thing. They too had a disturbed mind. And that's what caused them to harm us in the past. So now just as with ourselves, we can have a bit of gentleness and forgiveness for the mistakes that we've done in the past. So too now, considering this other person, can we also think that, yeah, may they be free of all those disturbing emotions that then lead them to do harmful actions to others. And then if we can get that kind of mind, that kind of aspiration towards the enemy, then of course we can extend that to the the friend and the stranger, just aspiring that they too are free of all their afflictions, all their negative emotions. And so we can just check if that aspiration that we have for ourselves to be free of the afflictions, to be free of suffering, how easily and naturally that arises in relation to ourself, then compare that to the friend enemy stranger and see if it's at the same level of intensity. Okay, so we'll end the meditation here. My, uh, my little meditation bell isn't working. <laughs> <clears throat>